And I'll tell you, we have no, there is no more exciting United States candidate in the country than John James. From his military service fighting for our country, to leading a business, to someone who is so strong in his faith, his love of family, and his love of country, we could not do better than John James from the United States Senate, and we would be honored, but we need your help. We need your help. The president needs your help. John James needs your help. And let's go get it. Let's roll up our sleeves, get to work in four more years. And let me introduce our next United States Senator from the great state of Michigan, John James. How's everybody doing today? It's a beautiful day in Michigan. It's a beautiful day in Michigan. All days in Michigan are beautiful because we know how much it took and how much sacrifice it took for us to breathe free. Each and every single one of these breaths were paid for with blood. And we best not forget those sacrifices. Never forget. Tomorrow, September 11th, a day where we witnessed horror in our generation. A day where our nation was attacked by a faceless coward. 9-11 affected us all. We all remember where we were, and I remember where I was as a cadet at the United States Military Academy, ironically, leaving my American politics class, going to my economics class. And I remember leaving and, and being in the hallway and leaving my class and hearing whispers hearing whispers of airplanes taking off. Let's fly! Man, I love the smell of jet fuel in the evening. It smells like freedom. We remember where we were, and as I was walking up to my classroom, you're hearing these whispers in the hallway of, of planes hitting towers and things smoking, and it, it sounded like a movie, it sounded like a fantasy, but we figured out very quickly that it was a nightmare. We figured out very, very quickly what was going on. As we walk into our classroom and we see the television set playing, and we usually watch the Marcus, but our econ teacher told us that sometimes there are more important things in class. He said, you're here not to be Rhodes Scholars, but to be leaders of men. He said, today, this is the day we go to war. We recognize exactly what was going on. We realize exactly what was going on, that we would be called on to protect that freedom of speech, that we would be called on to make sure that we preserve this nation, this republic, that we would be called on to stand up and fight for Americans and interests around the world. See, here's the thing. On September 11th, a mother, a mother dropped her kids off at daycare and then 45 minutes later found herself plunging from the top floors of a tower because it seemed like that was a better alternative than the horror that was behind her. I want to go to Washington just about as badly. I want to go to the swamp just about as badly as I wanted to go to the desert. But see, here's the thing. I went for her. I went for you. And thousands of people who went to war, recognized why we did it. Those of us who are in a position to stand up and fight for this nation must never be forgotten. In this moment, if you are a first responder, if you are a veteran, if you are a frontline medical worker, please stand or raise your hand and be acknowledged by your grateful, your grateful peers.
It was an honor to serve, and it'll be an honor to serve for you again. I entered West Point and the whole world changed. We saw the towers come down. We went to war in Afghanistan and Iraq. I lost many classmates and friends. My father was a Vietnam veteran, and I learned the value of service before self before I even got to West Point. I see another group around that understands service before self. Find police and fire officers who put themselves in harm's way to keep our community safe. I thank you for your service. Like Vice President Pence said last week, it's a, not a, an either or thing, it's a and both thing. I understand what it's like to be a black man in this country. I understand what it feels like to have guns drawn on you because someone perceives you as a threat as you're parked in your car in a parking lot. I understand what it feels like to be pulled over in a nice area of Detroit with my son in the back and wonder if this is the day that your, his son is going to see you bleed out in the street. I understand what it feels like, but I also understand what it's like to be an officer patrolling areas with people who would just as soon see you gone. Understand what it takes to leave my family and my loved ones to stand up for people who can't fight for themselves. We need to repair the fabric that's been torn by social and racial injustice, but we need to support our police officers and first responders. As a former officer, I understand these challenges and the, and the challenges that law enforcement faces. And right now, I'm running against a man. I'm running against a man who says, who says we need police reform and will copy and paste the same memo for four years straight. And when he has the opportunity to actually vote for it, he doesn't put black lives first. He puts his vote with Chuck Schumer first. He votes against even allowing the bill to come to the floor for debate. This is someone who votes 95% with Chuck Schumer in the Democratic Party and votes 85% with Bernie Sanders. That's a solid A as a New York senator and a solid B as a socialist. That doesn't fit our state and that doesn't fit our future. Democrats want to talk about seeing President Donald Trump's tax returns. President Donald Trump has gone to Washington, gone to the swamp, and you have a, somebody who started out with $6 billion, now has three. Now, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And he's lost billions of dollars trying to serve this nation. And you have Gary Peters who doubles his wealth while in Washington. I want to see his tax returns. How do politicians go to Washington and get rich when Michigan continues to fall behind? That's wrong. How do politicians get to stay on their health care, exempt themselves from Obamacare, and then say and lie and get away with it that I want to take away your benefits? But we're going to hold them accountable. Right now, we have the ability and the opportunity to put people in power who understand what it's like in the real world and are dedicated to service before self, not self before service like Gary Peters. Another person who understands what it takes is President Donald Trump, someone who's brought more to this country as president by deregulating 22 harmful regulations for, uh, harmful regulation for every good one that we're making holding China accountable, moving jobs back from Mexico, signing the critical USMCA, which helped our economy flourish. He just brokered a historic peace deal between uh, Israel and UAE, which is making the world a safer place. We must stand by our allies in Israel. We must make sure there's no public space to the United States of America and our friends in Israel and dispel any hint of hate, racism, and anti-Semitism in our ranks. There's somebody or currently depriving you of your constitutional right to two senators in, uh, in Washington. His name is Gary Peters. 
He's uh, been invisible for a number of years. And uh, you want to talk about somebody who doesn't show up for work. Gary Peters talks about holding China accountable. And then he's on a commission to hold China accountable and doesn't show up for 89% of the meetings. If you didn't show up at work 89% of the time, you'd be fired. He wants to talk about standing up for small businesses, what he did for cherries, and conveniently omits that he got nothing done, probably because he missed 84% of those meetings. If you didn't show up for 84% of time at work, you'd probably be fired. He can't open his mouth without talk being ranking member of Homeland Security and Government Affairs. Well, you know what his responsibility is? To prepare us for pandemics. And he failed. He was in Congress during H1N1. He ran during Ebola. And he downplayed the virus at the beginning of this year. He missed briefings. He didn't show up for work and missed 80% of those meetings. And then he wants to come up and talk about getting your vote again. He has a six-figure salary paid for by you, 50K annual pension paid for by you, gold-plated health care plan paid for by you. <laughs> What'd you say? There you go. But you know what? I only have one vote. I'm just a candidate. You need to make sure. We need to make sure. We need to make sure that nothing can pry our vote away from us. We need to make sure that we're standing up and we're doing what we need to do. Folks ask me all the time, John, what are you doing to, to win the vote in Detroit, which is code for how you're going to win the black vote? I say, you let me worry about that. Look. I'm going to tell you what you need to worry about. You need to worry about your vote. You need to worry about getting as many live people to vote that you possibly can. We live in a culture that's so concerned about what everybody else is doing, we're not concerned about what we're doing in our community. We need to make sure that we're driving margins out here so they hear us. See, here's the thing. We're messing up. We're messing up. See, here's the thing. We are content with calling ourselves the silent majority. It's wrong. And no more. Why are we quiet? Why are we quiet? Our policies work, our values are right, and our cause is righteous. We must have hope. We must have hope and remember that it's not Democrats that are taking our country the wrong way. It's us for not standing up. We are in a Republican Party that has boldness in our DNA. But the problem is, is we have forgotten it. We have forgotten the fact that this is the party of emancipation. We have forgotten the fact that this is the party of women's suffrage. We have forgotten the fact that this is the party of the civil rights movement. We have forgotten the fact that this is the party of criminal justice reform. Never forget, never forget, never forget. That's more than just a tagline. That should be a way of life. Never forget the sacrifices that got us here. Never forget the people who were lost on September 11th. Never forget the people who marched down from the north, from Michigan. And the, the Republican Party was started in, in the mid 1800s to do two things, to free men from bondage and to hold this nation together. And in 2020, the Republican Party is called to do two things, to free men from bondage and hold this nation together. We don't have an option. So you let me worry about the vote. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Both parties have failed black people. Both parties have failed black people. 
But we commonly point at Democrats for neglecting the black vote. We need to use our thumbs for not even trying. See, we have an opportunity right now, not just to flip a seat in the United States Senate, but flip the entire narrative that Democrats want us all to believe. We get back to our DNA of being bold without being boorish. We get back to who we are of being courageous in our cause. We understand that we have the solution and to move this nation forward because we recognize what Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. Freedom is not something we pass on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and passed on for them to do the same. Listen closely. I only have 17 more pages, so listen closely. <laughs> Now, I was raised in a Baptist church. Y'all better buckle up. Listen closely because I want to be crystal clear. Do not under, don't underestimate the appeal of socialism for those for whom status quo has failed. For the American dream to prevail, for us to defeat socialism and turn anarchy on his head, for us to save a generation, we can't just say that socialism sucks and assume that people will follow us. Stuck Americans don't want socialism, they just want the pain to stop. But it's up to us to offer a remedy that works. We must show them an America where a child's outcome isn't determined by the zip code they're born in, where a good education is attainable and hard work truly does get you ahead. We must show them an America that protects our community from tyrants without leaving children vulnerable to terrorists. We have to show them in America where a woman has better choices in life and death and where an accident or an illness doesn't leave a family in financial ruin. We must show them in America where the son of a slave can become a sharecropper, the son of a sharecropper can become a mason, the son of a mason can become a truck driver, and the son of that truck driver can be standing before you here today knocking on the door of the U.S. Senate. That's what's possible in this America. You show me a world where you can go from slave to senator in four generations and from prosperity, from poverty to prosperity in one, and I'll show the United States of America. I'll show you the American dream. As we move forward, this nation, over the next couple of days, we have to remember our call to worry about what we can do where we are and make sure we're doing everything we can to make this party, this GOP, broaden the back to include everyone and recognizing that we have no need to be scared. We must be bold and courageous because we represent one who is greater than we are. We must counter the socialist movement of anarchy, envy, and confiscation with a conservative movement of access and opportunity. We must show this generation that free will and free enterprise benefits each of us without sacrificing compassion and conscientiousness for all of us. We must become disciples of the American dream and share the good news unafraid with those who are being seduced by lies. That's how we win. That's how America wins. The hour is at hand, brothers and sisters. And by the grace of God and your hard work, freedom will not end with us. The American dream, I love you too, will not end with us. We're just getting started. Thank you. God bless you. Never forget. Never forget. Never forget. Let's fly.